Uh, today is Wednesday, my dudes. Uh, I will be doing some auto tiling stuff today. I haven't really done any auto tiling before, but I found out that tiled. Hey, Mystic City Games with the 15 bit share, welcome. I found tiled has an auto tiling feature, so I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn how that uh, is used, so that I can try to start using it. I was concerned that my tile set was particularly uh, difficult because it's got a few different conditions and layers to it, but I think actually this is like fine. I think this solution works. It's going to be a little interesting to set it up because it's got a, a little unique way of doing the rule sets, but we're going to work that out today. Tiled. That's what we're working on right now. I've been checking out this, um, this tiled thing. Uh, it's pretty interesting. With one press of a button, you can basically tile an entire map just like this, right? Based on a bunch of rules that you set up. Now, I have no ever done that before, so I'm going to do that today. So what I'm going to do actually is um, probably pick up. <clears throat> See, I was trying to do some tiling, some auto tiling stuff here. There's like a, there's like a, what do they call it? They're like, uh, what do they call them? They call them terrains. There are terrains and then there's auto tiling in tiled. And the terrains work like this. They have this really cool visual interface and you just draw the regions and then it works it out based on that. However, this isn't really what I'm going to use. So the regions, no good. Not for what we want to use, but the rules for the auto tiling, very good. I'm going to like just open up um, a random new tiled instance. Uh, let's, let's go make a new one then. New tile map, 64 by 64, sounds good, great. And we'll call this one auto tile test. I'm just going to start off by like drawing a bunch of stuff. Um, and seeing if I can produce the same sorts of shapes. I'm going to take these shapes and in the next... 20 minutes or so we're gonna turn these right into this beautifully textured environment that's the goal for today <clears throat> first thing we need to do is go look at the tutorial <laughs> uh i was looking at a really good youtube tutorial there's a there's a way we have to name these a rule file is a standard map file which can be written by entitled .tmx in one rule file, like can be multiple fun rules. So tmx is like what I'm using right now. So this is the this is a test file. I'm gonna make a new one. I'm gonna call this. Okay, so the rule files don't need to be named something specific. We'll just call it um, grass rules. Grass does rule, doesn't it? First thing we need to do is name something regions, right? That's like step one. The way we signify these regions is by just placing the plots. What I'm going to do before we finish this is actually to use um, a simpler. Um, so these like these tiles are going to be replaced by other things, but I also need to create tiles that are going to serve as like my blocks, my like language for the logic of how these get replaced. So like. I need like a null one that's going to just like define the region. So like I could use, uh, I could use like this, for example, for just saying, Hey, there's going to be a tile here. In fact, better yet, let's do like a checkerboard. Okay. So that's going to be our null tile. Okay. So now we can start thinking about our regions. Actually, hang on. First we do regions, then you say tile layer, we say input, mm, prototype, and then we say another tile layer, we say output, grass. I think that's correct. <sighs> okay. The name determines which layer on the working map is examined. Okay, so this would be input ground and we're going to output ground as well. Okay, so the region defines 
the area that it's going to examine in which to create the rule, right? So in this case, the region is these two blocks here. So any time now, when it goes and tries to, to convert this on one of these, it's going to find this situation where you've got something here and something not here, and it's going to do the output over that. So the output for this is going to be for me to grab the forest set and put it there. That's going to be the output for this. Which um, Studio Ghibli movies are you guys' favorites? Which do you like the most? Oh, Princess Mononoke. That's my favorite. Sorry. I, f I totally forgot. I was like, which one is it? Yeah, Princess Mononoke. That's my favorite. For sure. No question. Okay. Um, so, the way we make this work now is we have our auto tile test, we have our grass rules. We need to go into the containing folder for this. And we need to make a new text file called rules.txt. And you need to basically copy the file name of the one you're going to use and paste it in. I think that's all you have to do. So I'm going to now go into this and press the button and see what happens. Mm, auto map. Go. I don't think we uh, got that quite right. Okay. This is it here. So dot slash. That's what I didn't do. Is that same containing folder? Is that how that works? <gasps> we got something. Look, a thing happened. It did all the wrong things. Great. <laughs> Great. Nothing. <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> what? So it's using this. Right. For that. I think what I need to do is fill these with null. I think I need another null color. That's like a n nothing, you know, like an actually nothing color rather than just empty space. Cause I think empty space means anything. So let me, let me like copy this and then use like a different, I'll use like, a, a darker set this this will work now so this everywhere that we've got in our input everywhere that we've got these like light bits we need to replace with the dark bits I'll well, not replace but draw over them okay now what I have to do is actually go back to my auto tile test and do a great big paint bucket of these tiles that I don't like. Okay. Right. These like non null tiles or whatever it is. Right. And then it will work. Oh, let's try. That's looking a lot better. Look at that. It's got those internal corners, right? That's a lot closer. But I think string bats was almost right. I think string bats had something going on here where it's tried to, it's tried to do these in the wrong. It's like done this after it's done that, right? See how this is like, like it, it basically took this from, it's like, this is like a tile set. Not a tile set. Uh, this is something here, right? These three. So it worked out these three, and then it worked out these three. I don't know how it picked the logic for that. You can see th this one here got placed over that. I think I probably should have changed this to like a pink or something. It's a little difficult to look at.
Okay, I want to animate some horsies now. Horsies for me. Alright, I think we did a good job today, guys. That's pretty good progress. For like, a couple hours of mucking around. Check this out, everybody. Just so you guys all know, this is going to be on YouTube, so... What I ended up doing, if you guys remember, way back, we had, um... A bunch of different shapes we were working with. They were all kind of different from each other. Some of them were for corners, some of them were for flats, and all kinds of stuff. And I ended up going on this very, this much more simple scheme. And the only tile we actually care about is the center tile, right? So we ended up with quite a lot. <laughs> There's a couple, couple hundred here. Um, so the way this all works, to break it down from the top really quickly, is we have our regions. Inside the regions, I denote which blocks are solid and which blocks are empty, right? Some of these are angled as well, and the fact that I have angled tiles makes them more complicated. Uh, makes more, more permutations here and combinations. So, I have two layers on my tile set, right? I have a foreground layer and a background layer, and I've got those set to the two outputs here. Output ground background, output ground. So with just one flat prototype input, I can get two sort of like lovely layered uh, layers. And the way I've set this up was to just go, okay, fill all nine, fill all nine minus one, and then rotate that around, right? Putting it in all the different spots. And then take away two and start rotating those around, you know? And I just sort of created this little system where I would just rotate everything 90 degrees to, to get every kind of little combination that you could get with that configuration. So in this case, I've got look three on three across the top empty and then six on the bottom filled. And I've sort of like flipped that and rotated that a couple of times to get all the different uh, variations on that. And I did that for every possible tile <laughs> combination in my system, uh, which turned out to be a lot. But, it, you know, this was like three or four hours, right, of work in total, maybe like five hours. Now, what's really important to understand here is that this map that I created uh, like last week took me at least eight hours to do, right, fully. It was something around eight hours to get this done. Something like that, it might've been less. But in any case, it was a matter of hours, right? Creating this system took me some hours. But now that this is functional, I can just go into a map like this, right? Press the A key and swap these two layers and it's done. That's it. Look at that. Lovely layered tiles. All the way through with one button press. How good was that? <laughs> 